Yeah, obviously, Patrick mentioned the, the timeline. Uh, I think GAC will – actually, I know GAC will turn seven here in December, and I think it looks like we're going to cross the $7 million range or mark before that time. Uh, the response to this has been phenomenal. Uh, obviously, we all know people that have been touched or affected by cancer, but to see the response from across the state, and obviously back in September we were up in Eau Claire and did an event, uh, and we were able to fund four different organizations in the Chippewa Valley, and that's really been our theme as we've done some of the outstate events across the state. Um, obviously last year in Whitewater, Eau Claire this year, and, and I think the response and the need, uh, in addition to research that we, we help fund at the Carbone Center, but also the other patient care initiatives across the state that we found uh, through our travels have been, um, you know, we've been able to help a lot of people. And I think you look at what this organization and the people in it have done from a financial standpoint, as Patrick mentioned, the dollar amount, but I think more than anything, as we've traveled, uh, just the the uh, presence and the understanding and the the willingness to talk to people about what they're going through. And literally almost every day I get either a call or a text about somebody else. And usually, obviously it's unfortunately been people that I know that are diagnosed that are going through some stage of, or some form of cancer. So we made a lot of progress. Um, our, our people here at Carbone and directed by Howard Bailey have done a phenomenal job and we've made advances, but we still obviously have a long ways to go. And we're excited to have Eau Claire coming in on Sunday. Um, as Patrick mentioned, we're gonna be honoring and recognizing some doctors and, and people from that area, uh, along with some, patient, some patients. Um, and then obviously the chance to play in a game setting for our guys is important. I think it's good from a basketball standpoint um, for basketball in the state of Wisconsin that we continue to do this, having spent time in the WIAC uh, knowing how good basketball is at that level and how important it is to the state. Um, that conference has done a phenomenal job of representing Division Three basketball nationally. And uh, to be able to do that in, in a game setting and play against a team that's preparing for a season uh, obviously only helps us as we continue to, to march towards November 7th. Thanks, Coach. Jim, go ahead first. Did a really good job of keeping the secret scrimmage secret. Mm -hmm. Can you tell it's us? It's a anything? closed scrimmage. Closed I'm scrimmage. Excuse secret. me. Yes. Can you tell us anything about said closed scrimmage? Yeah, I thought we there was a lot of good things. I, you know, looking back at it, watching film last night and again this morning, I, and I've said this for a long time. We need to be able to do more of these. Uh, and I don't know where the the magic number of two came up, whether it's closed scrimmages or exhibition games, but. Having 30 days of practice should be at the coach's discretion of how we use them. And I'm not saying go bananas with 15 of them, but they're, they're so valuable to be able to learn on the fly and kind of get baptized by fire. Uh, I thought we did some really good things. I thought we were very good defensively. Uh, I played a lot of guys. I played 12 and pretty much consistent minutes. Um, that probably won't be, you know, be able to sustain that. But I think this is a group that what I've learned, and some of this I learned through the trip to France, some of it I've continued to learn through the fall. You know, obviously we have three really, really good players that are proven. And then the rest, that we've seen guys kind of take hold and, and step forward. But I think it's also going to be one of those teams where it, it could be different guys in that 8, 9, 10 spot each night. And and to use the the depth of this team and I think kind of the, the balance of this team in, in different ways. Um, you know, guys, I thought everybody had moments yesterday. Uh, Tyler Wall, Chucky Hepburn were phenomenal. Um, but I'm looking for some of those other guys to continue to be more consistent. And, you know, flashes, good half. And then a half where we were, weren't as consistent in terms of individual play. But I thought overall, specifically defensively for this early, given the fact that we didn't do a whole lot of defense in the summer, um, we were, and we're gonna need to be, they know and we've understood that, that we have to hang our hat on that end. But uh, um, I like the way they compete. We played exceptionally hard um, and the film session this afternoon will be a great teaching tool for us. So, um, and we, we had a lot of positive things happen. Jeff. Greg, you, you mentioned the defense and, and we've talked to you about a siege and his, what he needs to do defensively. Can you share, is he, is he making progress in that area where he stands right now? Well, he got spun in circles a few times yesterday, um, which is good because he needs to now see it today on film. 
and, and see himself. And I think that's, as I addressed them yesterday after the, the scrimmage in the locker room, this is always the best teaching for us because they get to see themselves on film and not looking at players of years gone by and, and using those examples. So I, I think what I've seen from Connor is an increased level of toughness, um, which is the first step towards being a better defender. And the other thing is understanding the – he understands the rules and the concepts. Now they have to become habits and instincts so he can play faster and more aggressive. I think defensively specifically he's thinking a lot, which slows down his reaction time. Um, and then he's, you know, a day late and a dollar short and close, short on a closeout or late on a closeout or doesn't help on a screen. So, um, you know, those things are normal for a freshman to go through. And fortunately for us, um, you know, he gets challenged every day in practice by who he has to guard and the fact that, you know, I'm going to play him and, and I'm going to play young – I play young guys. They know if they um, can do some things and, and improve that I'm going to give you a crack. So – um, he's definitely, you know, in the mix to play because he does so many things offensively that you can't teach. Um, we'll help him with his defense, and, and he knows that. That's the most important thing. He understands that that area needs to continue to increase uh, his value on, on that end. We'll go Abby and then back to you, Ben. Greg, I was talking to Jacoby Neath the other day about his uh, recovery, and he mentioned last season that you guys, you or coaching staff and him, made the mutual decision to play on the injury. Obviously, we saw that. But I was wondering from your perspective, what went into that decision from your end to have him play knowing he had the partial tear? Um, it was really based on the information and advice I got from our medical people that it couldn't get really any worse and that was the question to jo Jacoby was okay here's what the doctors are saying what do you want to do and, and that was the thing first and foremost when those things are in play or those decisions are in play I get it out of my hands because it's not my decision it's the doctor's advice and what they want to do and then the the student athletes but with Jacoby's situation I said hey if you want to we'll try to you know there's days I gave him time off you know, and I, I don't like the word load management, but we managed his load um, and shut him down for certain days after games. He didn't do a great job early of communicating to us when he didn't feel quite right. Um, and that's something he got better at as we went through the season. I, I want to know that you're feeling a little sore, you know, before three days of going in a row. And, and you tell me on the third day I didn't feel good two days ago. Um, so he got better at that as the season went on. Um, but now I think you know, he got knocked down yesterday and kind of like, okay, I'm okay. You know, got up and um, he, he's good. And I think his progression, too, has been noticeable. Um, you can tell he's a veteran that's been through it. Uh, he rarely is out of position, rarely makes a mistake. He, he does the things that vets should do. Ben. Greg, in addition to Neath, who else is are you kind of looking at to handle the point in certain situations if Chucky needs a break? And where is your comfort level with that position? after a full off season. Yeah, I think obviously we recruited Kamari McGee for a reason, you know. Um he he played I thought second half was much better than the first yesterday. Um and and not I'm not talking about scoring, I'm just talking about he's another one that's learning much like Connor what our defensive rules are and now you know him when you ask him that or you point it out, but it has to become an instinct. And I thought he played much more instinctual the second half. He was diving on the floor. He was up and over ball screens. He was into guys. And I thought he did a much better job the second half. And then I always use Max Klesmet there um, at, at times too. So um, I think he has the potential to help us in short spurts in that regard because he's, he's tough, he's smart, he makes good decisions. Um, and then Isaac Lindsay has played it in a little bit in the offseason. He he's only been back like two days of practice and then yesterday's scrimmage. So he hasn't had a lot of reps here in the last two weeks because of an ankle. But now that he's back, um, I think that's something that he'll get more reps in practice. And whether it's with the scout team or with the group, you know, I've been kind of playing musical chairs with who I've been bringing over, I've kind of rotate and flip flip things around in practice when we go to our possessions just to give, give different guys looks. And I think the time on the scout team for everybody, um, you know, there's really only three guys that probably won't be on it. Uh, at one point in time during the year um, are, are Chucky, Steve, and, and uh, Tyler. But I think it's valuable. Those reps over there are really valuable, too, to help guys develop. It's not just what they get when they come to my side of the floor. Abby, go ahead. 
I know way back when, or not way back when, but like early or this month, you mentioned that you, you we weren't going to know always who was playing the five. But I did notice in practice that you, you had Carter Gilmore running some reps at the five. Uh -huh. I was wondering what you saw in him that makes you comfortable playing him in that position, even though it's just in practice. Yeah, I think he understands how to play in ball screens. I think he's gotten really good at that in terms of specifically in the middle of the floor with some of our drop coverage. So he's he's understood how to not how to tr properly position his feet and play the drop and not get opened up and driven by. Um, I think the one thing about Car uh, Carter that stands out too is he's not afraid to mix it up. You know, he's he's physical, he's competitive. Um, I played him a little bit there yesterday. I thought he was really good in the first half. He made a lot of good things happen for us on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, and I've used Tyler there some. Uh, I've obviously Chris Hodges played there yesterday too. So I think with all of those guys, specifically Carter and Chris, um, Tyler allows us to switch almost everything. I mean, he's he's a defensive Swift's Army knife. I mean, he's so good defensively, uh, no matter who I put him on. And sometimes he tries to play too many. He tries to guard two guys at once and gets himself in trouble. But with how he flies around the floor, but uh, I think with Carter and with Chris, it's continue to get more reps in those ball screen situations where um, they'll see on film today where we got drug out too far east west and gave a little pocket pass to the rim or we didn't stay long enough and stop the ball and we gave up a little hesitation to the rim and those things for two guys specifically in Chris's state or situation he's young yet and he's going through this for the first time in terms of getting these reps and kind of being thrown to the fire so to speak so I, I thought you know the the defensive component, we got challenged more in the ball screens yesterday, I think, than we did even in the four games in France, which was great. And now we got some more things on film that we can help them with and, and really break down. You've seen some of the practices where we've gone two on two in ball screens, specifically in the middle of the floor. The edges are a little easier to, there's, it's more definitive and clear how we're going to handle it. In the middle, it's a lot of decision making and it's a lot of feel and, it, and that comes through reps and just practice reps and then also um, you know, game reps where they don't do it well and then they see it on practice the next day or they do it well and they see it on film the next day. So um, I think with that, it, it will you'll see a multitude of guys there and maybe you won't see a five on the floor per se. You know, the, the numbering system comes more into play with keeping us organized in transition, out of bounds plays, um, those type of things. But from an offensive standpoint, um, you know, we, we want guys that can play multiple positions. Bro. Greg, how important are these first few games? They're always important, but how important are they for an inexperienced team as you get to learn about them as they get comfortable as well? Yeah, I think not only every every game, and, and that's the nice part about games is I can't jump out and blow my whistle and stop it, and they have to learn on the fly. But the practice is also, you know, and as I've mentioned a few times here, the game footage that they're going to see today, you know, we could go through, I could sit there for two and a half hours with them and show them the whole game, but I try to really break it down and knowing that I you know, want to use 25 to 30 minutes in the film room, teach and then move on. And we're going to work on some of those things on the floor today too. So we'll translate it from watching it, playing it yesterday live, seeing it, and then breaking it down even more to help those guys. So um, I think every games, practices, film sessions, everything, vets helping younger guys. I think our older guys have done a really good job of trying to, I hear them all the time, kind of auto-correcting on the fly. Um, and, and that's a sign of a team that's connected, you know, and we've talked about the chemistry of this group, which I think is really, really good. And that'll help us as we grow through the year, too. Last one from me, I promise. Um, Chucky Hepburn's obviously stepping into more of a leadership role this year, but he is still behind Tyler and Steven, kind of, because, you know, he was a leader as a point guard last year. But how have you seen him embrace this newer leadership role this year? And how comfortable have, do you think he is? I think he's very comfortable, and I think he's gotten better in terms of um, from a vocal standpoint of really uh, approaching guys. And I think Chucky's also, by how he's changed his body and how he's worked, has done a good job of leading by example. So it doesn't always have to be the most vocal guy. You know, we went from Brad Davison, who was maybe one of the best, most vocal leaders I've ever been around, to – Tyler, who plays very much the same way in terms of hair on fire and plays hard, but leads in different ways. And, and Tyler's gotten more vocal. Chucky, I think, has done a lot by example, um, but also 
you know, in his own way. And I've always felt that leadership has to be organic. I can't force it, and they have to find their voice. We help them with it, but they still have to find their voice. And he's done a better job of, of kind of learning and growing into that as time has gone on. And another one is I've seen is Max has hit the ground, you know, like he's been here for a couple years already um, in terms of how he understands and, and he's played two years, so that helps. You know, he's bringing some college basketball experience to those huddles and to the floor and to the locker room, and, and those things are invaluable. Uh, a couple more. Ben, and then over here. Chris Hodges has really hasn't played competitive basketball in two years, I'm, mm -hmm. so I'm assuming he's pretty much raring to go here for you. What are some of the challenges with him in terms of making sure he's not trying to do too much and just trying to have him kind of pace along to be that – that can that important backup for what Steven and Tyler are going to bring for you? I think always with younger guys is slow your mind down, you know, not, not try to make it, it because the game will be specifically for big guys. The game will appear exceptionally fast at times. So slow down and don't, and, and be patient. Um, that's, that's one thing I've always written in notes with him is be patient um, in both, both ends of the floor. Um, and that's something just through reps he's going to have to continue to learn. And I think the other thing is don't get frustrated because coach may not be happy with you every day or each possession. So you got to go on to next quickly, move on to next, and be ready for the next opportunity and learn from it. And, and I think for him, I, I've noticed the game has slowed. It's not slow enough yet, but it's, we've made progression from where we were in France. The first, if I showed you film from France, he would have thought I put him on a merry-go-round and, you know, he came off of it or tilt the whirl and just everything was spinning in every different direction. And now I think I've seen him start to, okay, I don't need to worry about this and that and that over there. I can just focus on what my job is and, and do that well and, and just keep it simple too. And I think he's gotten, he's always been good in terms of having a nose for the ball off the glass and he's rebounded well. And, and now it's a matter of, you know, slowing himself down in the post not not playing too frantic or too too rushed, too hurried, um, and continue to play physical. And again, today's film session will be good for him because he was in some situations where um, you know he will have to get better at uh, in in some cer certain situations. And that's that's why those films are are good to go through. Let's take two more over here, and then back to you, Jeff. Yeah, just based on what you've seen so far, uh, what's the thing that excites you most about this year's team? Oh man, it excites! Me. I think the thing that excites me most is what I don't know. Um, there's so many unknowns with this group yet. How they're going to respond to adversity, um, you know. In yesterday's game, you know, we never we never trailed, so it was one of those where we didn't get really we pushed got pushed a little bit. But um, I want to know how we respond when things don't go well, like if we lose a game, which is probably going to happen. You know, how do we how do we bounce back? How do we handle that? Um, you know, how do you handle, you know, like I mentioned, the depth of this group. I played 12 guys yesterday. That's not going to be probably sustainable. That's not going to be the norm. So if it's not your night when your number or your night when your number isn't called, how do you handle that? And how do you handle it when it is called? And um, so because we're going to need everybody, I, I'm just watching the makeup of this group, whether it be foul trouble, injuries, matchups, who's playing well, who hasn't played exceptionally well. I, I think I'm hopefully going to have a lot of options, and, and it's competitive, um, which is good. You know, it's, it's making it hard for me and our staff, uh, which is a good thing, and we tell them that. Make it hard on us to have rough, dis tough decisions on who to have on the floor and, and put yourself in that position where we can't have you off the floor. So I think the exciting part for me is how do we learn from this film session today? How do we respond in practice today? How do we prepare for Sunday's game and, and get better? And I, I think the thing that will help us most is just experience. We'll, we'll clarify more of those things that, that, um, that we need to know as we go through the month. Jeff. Greg, one guy who doesn't have a lot of experience is Ilver. Are, are you starting to get a picture of long season, what he might be able to help you, in what areas he might be able to help you this year? Yeah, I think Marcus has gotten a lot stronger, and I've seen the benefits of that, just playing more more physical, and specifically the last few days of practice. I thought he's practiced really well, um, but now it's a matter of being more consistent. Um, that's the thing. I, I didn't think he had played yesterday as well as he had practiced the last previous two days. And 
you know, and, and part of it's foul trouble. He got he got a couple quick fouls and got him out of a rhythm too. So, and I treated it even though we couldn't foul out yesterday. Technically, Coach Jacobs and I agreed to like that was a conversation. We're going to really let guys foul out, and I said, yeah, and then no. We will have them fall out just so they understand they can't foul and you're going to come and sit down, but I'm not going to eliminate anybody from playing on either side. So I think just the consistency is the biggest thing. you got to translate what you're doing in practice really well, and he was really good for two days, and now go do it you know, the next day when the lights come on. So um, with younger guys, that's typically the, the – um, a hurdle to get through and the biggest thing for him is the physicality of it that he has to play with and it's gotten better it's better than where it was a year ago now we just got to do it every day